Hi everyone, this is Mr. Neil Reiterter, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for tuning in to my latest video. So the patient in this video is not only a good friend, but also an ex-colleague. Um, I used to work with this uh, lovely lady uh, when I first qualified as an audiologist. Um, my first job really was in Nottingham within the NHS, and that's how I met uh, this lady. And it's also a friend. It's been a while since we worked together. It's been about 10 years and we were reminiscing and we couldn't quite believe it. it's been that long. Um, so yeah, so whenever I perform procedures on people I know, it's, it's weird, but you get a bit more nerv nervous because and I don't get nervous when performing you actually because I really enjoy what I do and I'm quite, I like to think I'm quite proficient at what I do. But when it's always friends or family, you just think, oh God, I hope you don't cause any injury or trauma so it's a bit of pressure and it didn't help that the um i should mention also that that, that my friend is also an audiologist i don't know if i mentioned that so we, we were colleagues but we were co-audiologist and i gave him a good ticking off today because both areas are fully fully blocked extremely blocked and impacted which makes it obviously much more difficult to remove and that's why i put some olive oil drops right from the offset and you can see the patient's got some keratin and she was experiencing clarence and clarinetting. So as soon as I got the clarinetting, right at the beginning, I withdrew the suction probe, put some oil in just to soften it. You can see this keratin now, that's, it's engulfed around this plug of wax, but the keratin is not uh, clarinetting. I'm not, it's not emitting any loud high frequency squeals. I've managed to almost trap the keratin around the wax so it's not flapping violently at the tip of the suction probe. So it's when the dead skin keratin when you're, suc you're performing suction, it flaps backwards and forwards violently at the tip of the suction probe. That's when you get the noise. But if you're able to almost get the keratin trapped um, and into the suction probe, so it's not flapping, you don't get you don't get that clarinetting. So I'm just extracting. So you can see there's a bit of keratin that came off the wax there, and the client's entrance of the ear canal is a bit narrower than the actual main aperture of the of her main ear canal. So the wax gets trapped and that's why I'm just wriggling this through and that's where the oil also helps, it provides some lubrication. So if you've got a ring stuck on your finger, uh, one, one of the things that you can do to help release the ring is to put some soapy water there and it just provides a bit of um, lubrication and in the same way that's uh, oil, olive oil not only helps bind the wax together to make it easier to, to get a suction grip piece basically um, and to make the wax come out in big plugs it also lubricates the ear canal wall uh, so it helps the wax wriggle out and you can see I'm just making very tiny circular motions here just trying to tease this wax through and this wax is literally hanging out of the ear at the moment I often joke with some patients like it's, it's almost like I'm delivering a baby I can see the head of the wax I can just see how dark this plug of wax is, it's extremely dark, so it's been there for a while, it's oxidised. Put it on the tissue there, it's almost black. And you can see the whole plug didn't come out in one big mass and that's because it got trapped at the entrance, so it kind of divided into two. There's the patient's tympanic membrane, a very healthy textbook, just a bit of soft wax near the isthmus on the posterior canal walls. I'm just attached to fine end cord, just hovering over that. And being an audiologist fully understands we're not trying to get every little speck of wax out. By doing so, we can unnecessarily damage the skin that lines the ear canal. We can cut and graze the ear. A bit of wax is good for you. Um, it's slightly acidic, so it inhibits certain bacterial growth. It helps repel insects. Wax is also, also an oily substance, so it helps uh, provide a protective film over the, the skin that lines the ear canal. And it also prevents it from drying and cracking. And wax is sticky, so any foreign particles, dust, dirt, pollen that enter the ear can stick to the wax and as the wax naturally migrates, which is normally the case in probably 90-95% of the population, it, the wax takes out with it any wax that it's, um, any dust or dirt or foreign particles that's embedded to it. So that was the left ear, this is the right ear, so I immediately put some olive oil drops in. The right ear was slightly more uh, impacted, I would say. The wax extended further into the ear canal. Um, 
and afterwards um, I was showing the, the, the more medial plug of wax over from the right here and it was taking the shape of the ear canal. You can actually see the first bend, the second bend, it was almost like a cast of wax. And you can actually see the isthmus, which is the narrowing about half a centimetre away from the eardrum. So this, this right ear was really, really impacted. It extended right from the entrance of the ear canal right to the eardrum. So we're looking around 2.6 centimetres up to 3 centimetres. That's the average length of an adult human ear canal. And is there some keratin here? So, so the more lateral wax, so the wax I'm trying to extract at the moment was a bit softer, a bit more glutinous. Whereas the more medial wax, which you'll see a bit later, was a bit firmer and harder and darker. And, and this is, we're at the first bend of the ear canal, uh, as I'm trying to wriggle this out. So I'm having to just manipulate the wax around the bend. So I'm kind of bringing it to the right. You can see, you can just see the entrance of the ear canal to the left there, the cartilage. And the wax uh, is kind of, the ear canal goes to the left and then it goes right again. So I'm just trying to, whilst I'm bringing this forward, I'm trying to wriggle it around the first bend. I'm just trying to bring it, I'm trying to suction it and bring it to the right slowly. And again, you can see the skin, the glossy outer layer of this plug of wax. That's dead keratin. And it's engulfed. So this keratin acts as double-sided sticky tape. It sticks to the ear canal wall and it also attaches itself, adheres itself to the plug of wax. And we're right near the entrance now, so you can see I'm just turning this to the right, just so we come out the ear canal. And in the first instance, I think a lot of the, a tail of the keratin got suctioned. There we are. So if I let uh, my friend, my colleague, just leave right now, people would actually see the wax hanging out of the ear canal. So that's what gives you some an idea of where we are in the ear now. We're literally just at the entrance. You can see the hair, the hair strands there, so we know we're near the entrance. You can see that rocking motion backwards and forwards, up and down. Whilst I'm breaking it up and down, I'm coming out as well, more lateral. And that rocking motion can help. And you see it's the, the, the wax that's more medial was harder. So still a lot of wax in there. You can see the keratin at the bottom of the ear canal. So again, we've got to be careful it doesn't coronet. Fortunately, it didn't, so I was able to extract this without any um, clarinetting, any violently uh, flapping skin that emits a high frequency sound. We were quite fortunate. So I actually put some more drops in again at this stage. You can see that's a strand of keratin that we're pulling through the plug of wax. You can see the oils, but you know, you know we just recently put oil in, you can see it's quite glossy. And this plug of wax is extends right to the eardrum, and so we're past the second bend now. So there's two bends. The first bend is about a half a centimetre into the ear canal. The second bend is about a centimetre into the ear canal. It's where the cartilage and bone meet. And then about half a centimetre near the eardrum, the eardrum narrows and it protrudes back outwards again. And this plug of wax, is it's blocked. Um, it's gone beyond the isthmus, the narrowing, so it's plugged. So I'm just rotating this plug of wax and it's just loosened and I'm just moving it out now. I think it's been about five years um, since the patient had the wax removed. They do require regular uh, removal. Where we used to work there was a, a, a nurse that would come once a week to, um, to remove wax and the, uh, my colleague and friend would just nip in and get it removed but um, they've since moved on, they're working elsewhere and after watching all my videos, I didn't want to go anywhere else. <laughs> Just teasing this. So again, we're out of the ear. Uh, this is visible externally. There we are. It's, see, it's quite dark tail. So we're going to move on. That's a very healthy eardrum. Uh, we call it tympanic membrane. And in a moment, you'll see some still images. So that's the wax. See how dark it is? It really is black, some of that wax. It's really oxidised. So, gave him a very polite uh, uh, kind of um, tap on the wrist. Um, they should know better. And I'm sure I'll see them much more sooner in the future. And I've just weighed that 667 milligrams. So, quite a big haul. I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. I hope you're keeping well and safe and you're having a wonderful evening. I shall upload some more videos.
um, the next few days. Thank you. Bye.